Let's find the inverse Fourier transform of a rectangular function. So a rectangular function in the frequency domain reminds us of what we would normally call a low-pass filter, or sometimes referred to as a boxcar function or a brick wall function. So basically, it's constant between two values, minus half and minus half, if we're using omega without dividing. And we want to know what the inverse Fourier transform is. Now, remember the Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse is a sinc function, so we should expect the inverse Fourier transform to also give us a sinc function. So let's move this out of the way. The first thing we should think about in finding the inverse Fourier transform is the inverse Fourier transform integral. We can simply replace f of omega with the value from here, which is either 1 or 0. So if we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity, we might as well integrate from minus half to half, and the value of f of omega would simply be 1. So we can write f of t equals 1 over 2 pi minus half to half 1 times e to the j omega t d omega. Now remember, we're integrating over frequency omega, so the constant in this case will be time. So when dividing, I'll be dividing by jt, j omega t from minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2. Now we simply replace the limits, or substitute the limits, so it's 1 over 2 pi jt times e to the... So where am I replacing the limits? I'm replacing them instead of omega. So it'll be jt over 2 minus e to the minus jt over 2. Now we could leave it like that, but it doesn't look anything like a sinc function. So let's just remember what sine x looks like. Sine x can be written as e to the jx minus e to the minus jx over 2j. So that's the Euler definition of sine. And what we have here looks very similar to that. We've even got the 2j in the denominator. So we're just about ready to turn that into a sinc function. So we have 1 over pi t times sine t over 2. And again, we could leave it at that, but it doesn't look like a sinc function yet. And the reason is because here we have t over 2, and here we only have t. So we could somehow manipulate the denominator here. So if I were to somehow, let's try moving this along. If I were to multiply by 1 over 2, and then divide that by 2, then the expression hasn't changed at all. So now I can rewrite it as f of t equals 1 over 2 pi times sine t over 2 divided by t over 2. And now that is my sinc function. So my answer is 1 over 2 pi sinc t over 2. And that, that is the final answer. That's what we were expecting. That's our sinc function. And that is the 
time domain representation of what in the frequency domain is a low-pass filter. So a low-pass filter or a rect function in the frequency domain can be represented in the time domain as a sync function.